Damn, this movie has everything. Well, except for Vince Chase. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 moments in Aquaman. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at the set pieces and character moments that made 2018's Aquaman one of the best films in the DC library. For the two people who haven't seen this billion dollar movie, beware the following spoilers. Number 10, arriving in the Sahara Desert. Where? Hey, is there anything nearby? Nothing but desert for hundreds of caves, mate. Nothing but desert. James Wan's film is one half 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and one half Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's not just a superhero origin story, but a treasure hunting adventure as well. This especially shines through during the Sahara Desert segment in which Arthur and Mira begin their search for the Trident of Atlan. Upon arriving, Arthur and Mira leap right out of the cargo plane, much to the shock of the pilot. Their travels take them to ancient ruins where Arthur's sweat plays a key role in solving a puzzle. Now hold still. The scene captures the same sense of awe you'd find in an Indiana Jones movie, but the banter between Arthur and Mira gives it a distinct personality. <laughs> Show off. Could've just peed on him. Number 9. Arthur's parents meet. That's how my parents met. Like two ships destined for each other. The relationship between Thomas Curry and Atlanta is a classic fish-out-of-water story, in more ways than one. Washing up by Thomas's lighthouse, the Queen of Atlantis is naturally caught off guard when she sees television and a dog for the first time. <laughs> Through warmth, understanding, and humor, though, Thomas shows her that the surface has a great deal to offer. Swimming away from her arranged marriage, Atlanta decides to remain at the lighthouse and has a son with Thomas. We could unite our worlds one day. It's a charming romance that sums up the movie's overarching theme of two different worlds learning to coexist. Alas, it's only a matter of time until they're driven apart. We'll be together again. You stay strong, my little prince. I'll always be with you. Number 8. The Trench Attack <laughs> Aquaman may be an action blockbuster, but James Wan rose to prominence directing horror films like Saw, Insidious, and The Conjuring. Wan's horror roots can be found in the trench attack sequence, which would feel right at home in Creature from the Black Lagoon. Wan also reportedly drew inspiration from the works of H.P. Lovecraft, and the trench definitely has a Lovecraftian quality to them. These amphibious fiends are only made creepier when you set them against a dark, stormy backdrop on the treacherous ocean. The trench engulf Arthur and Mira's boats like a horde of zombies, forcing them to abandon ship and venture to fathoms below. This thrilling scene is brief, but we can count on seeing more of the trench in a spin-off. You ready to jump? Number 7. Atlanta, Warrior Queen Atlanta and Thomas's happy life together hits rough waters when Atlanteans storm into the lighthouse, ready to take the queen back to Atlantis. Atlanta is much harder to catch than a fish, however. She fends off the intruders in a skillfully choreographed sequence that's shot to look as if it were executed in one take. Although she takes them all out with her trusty trident, Atlanta realizes that it's too dangerous for her to stay with her family. Bidding farewell to the man she loves and her young son, Atlanta forlornly returns to the cruel waters. As tearful as their goodbye is, this only makes it more uplifting when Arthur and his mother are finally reunited decades later. Number 6. Submarine Showdown Sir, there's something out there. Another submarine. Uh, no, I think it's a man. In Justice League, we were given a taste of how Arthur Curry earned his reputation as the protector of the oceans. Towards the beginning of his first solo film, though, we actually get to follow Arthur on one of his missions. A mission to come aboard. When pirates seize control of a nuclear submarine, Aquaman crashes in and swabs the deck with their faces. In this exhilarating set piece, Arthur exemplifies his super strength and masterful fighting skills. The sequence also makes it clear that Arthur is no Boy Scout, 
coldly leaving the pirate leader to go down with the vessel. You can't lead him like that! Please! You killed innocent people! You're asked to seek for mercy. In due course, Arthur intensifies his rivalry with David Kane, aka Black Manta, who vows to get revenge for his father's death. Damn you! Go! Number five, the Ring of Fire. What the hell is that? The Ring of Fire. This scene has the scope of a classic Hollywood epic, calling Ben-Hur and especially Gladiator to mind. Set in a massive underwater stadium, Arthur prepares to face off with his half-brother, Orm. With a ring of lava surrounding them, this is one of the film's most stunning sequences in terms of effects and production design. The battle choreography only contributes to the gravitas as these half-brothers clash in a fight for the throne. Being an all-around badass, Arthur is used to coming out on top. He underestimates his opponent, though, resulting in the destruction of his mother's trident. <laughs> Losing the battle in the last piece he had of his mother, Arthur hits his lowest point, but failure is an essential part of any hero's journey. I am the one true king! Number 4. Arthur vs. Black Manta After appearing in numerous comics and animated shows, Black Manta finally made his live-action debut in this movie. David Kane doesn't disappoint upon arriving in Sicily, sporting his signature bug-eyed helmet. Black Manta is ready to avenge his father with a few other high-tech warriors by his side. You thought you could walk away! I thought I told you not to make this happen. Shooting death rays out of his eyes, Manta sends Arthur flying across the island. Thus ensues an electrifying chase over rooftops as the soldiers pursue Mira, leaving a trail of destruction behind with every step. Arthur and Manta, meanwhile, square off mano y mano, and this time it's personal. It's a close call, but Arthur ultimately sends Manta tumbling down a cliff to his watery defeat. Number 3, The Final Battle. Rise, Atlanta! Imagine the Lord of the Rings, but underwater. That's basically this movie's climax in a nutshell, and it's every bit as epic as it sounds. Pitting Orm's forces against the Kingdom of Brine, this sequence delivers pretty much everything you could possibly want out of an Aquaman climax. Massive armies, an armada of vessels, armored sharks, the whole shebang. Orm prematurely deems himself Ocean Master, however, as Arthur and Mira show up with the aid of the Trench and the Leviathan Carathen. The King is risen. The set piece is wall to wall eye popping action and even a bit of romance. Yet, it all boils down to a final confrontation between Arthur and Orm atop a ship. This time, Arthur emerges victorious as the true King of Atlantis. Number 2, Atlantis Arrival. Welcome home. When it was announced that a live action Aquaman movie was officially setting sail, fans were unsure if the filmmakers could actually make the Kingdom of Atlantis a reality. Any doubts we might have had were flushed away, however, once Arthur arrived in the Hidden Empire. Atlantis lights up like an electric coral reef, complete with massive structures, underwater vehicles, and an array of sea animals. It's a society that's obviously grounded in fantasy, but still somehow comes off as convincing and even inhabitable. Gazing over this visual marvel, we're reminded of when we first saw Gotham City in Tim Burton's original Batman. It's an iconic comic book setting we never thought could be brought to life. Yet, there it is, on the silver screen. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. This is Atlantean technology, isn't it? Could you tell me how you got this? Sure. But first, you gotta tell me how to find him. There we go. Everybody smile.
Number one, the king has risen. Any king can wear a crown, but it makes a truly worthy ruler to wield the trident of Atlan. Presenting himself before the Leviathan known as Carathan, Arthur must prove there's more to him than meets the eye. Although the Colossus is initially skeptical, Carathan is willing to give Arthur a shot. Approaching the golden trident, Arthur pulls it free and gains control of the seven seas. It's a totally triumphant moment reminiscent of when King Arthur retrieved Excalibur. What's just as applause-worthy is seeing Arthur at last don his iconic outfit. People have poked fun at Aquaman's costume in the past, but this film modernized it in all the right ways. Shimmering in gold and green armor, Arthur is ready to accept his destiny. One true king. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.